Good morning, good life. You're listening to Detail Therapy, episode 73, the right way to write your morning pages. She's an award-winning YouTuber and best-selling author obsessed with helping you go after the life you want. I like it. Join her as she seeks out the stories and strategies. Give me every little detail. Of extraordinary people who found success. I need to get emotional. Oh, my God. Welcome to Detail Therapy with Amy Landino. Today is a chat with just you and me. When I say I'm excited about this one, I genuinely mean it. This is one of those topics that I'm so excited about getting into the weeds on. So if you're all about getting into the weeds on one of my favorite morning routine tactics, this is going to be a fun one. This is all about the writing practice that I do every morning called morning pages. I've talked about it a lot. There are so many people who are doing it or trying to do it in their morning routines. Um, And I think just a lot of questions in general about what the purpose of it is and how to do it properly have come up. So I'm just very excited to kind of do like this clarification chat around it. So today we're going to be discussing the details around what the heck Morning Pages is and why you should care, the right way to proceed with your Morning Pages practice each day to benefit your mindset and creativity, and I'm going to be answering your questions about Morning Pages according to the submissions you sent over to me on my Instagram, at Schmatastic. Before we get into it, for those of you who are new to the show, my name is Amy Landino and I will be your host. You can think of me as your number one productive lifestyle and success coach. I am the founder of Gatlu House, a resource dedicated to helping you go after the life you want. In addition to this podcast, we produce the award-winning YouTube series, Amy TV, of which I am also the host. And I've authored two best-selling books, including Good Morning, Good Life, which is now available on Amazon. I talked about morning pages extensively in that one as well. Links to everything will be in the show notes at our new home base on the internet, gatlu.com. Check it out. All right. First and foremost, let's just, I mean, we're just diving in because I think we're going to go to town on this one here. What is morning pages? Well, I got this practice from the woman who I assume invented it. I really, I, I think she did. Her name is Julia Cameron, and she is the best-selling author of the book, The Artist's Way. The Artist's Way is a very, very, I don't want to say old, but it's, it's, it's a book that has been around for a while. And uh, yes, this practice of morning pages is one of the practices that she talks about that are very important for the creative process. In fact, she calls morning pages the bedrock tool of creative recovery. So very simply, what it is, morning pages are three pages of longhand stream of consciousness writing done first thing in the morning. Very simply, morning pages. You do them in the morning. It's it's pretty uh, it's pretty rigid in its rule in that way, and you want to do three pages because you want to give yourself enough space. I think that's to be interpreted. She suggests three pages, and I agree with her. But I think it takes time to get to an agreement, and we'll we'll talk about the pages issue and getting to three pages and things like that. But what I think people miss the most here is that because this is such a creative practice and it is written about in books and talked about by so many people, that we really miss the part where it says longhand stream of consciousness. Longhand, and you have to understand what that means. And it is not your deepest, most productive, amazing, insightful, brilliant, genius work you've ever done. It's longhand stream of consciousness writing. It's that simple. So here's how I do morning pages myself. I wake up in the morning. I drag my feet to the bathroom and I do my skincare. I wake my face up first. I go downstairs. I get some lemon water. I start the coffee. I let the dog out. And then I immediately do morning pages after that. I've at least kind of woken up my body to some extent for the first 30 minutes or so, so that I can sit down and do something. But if I wait any longer to do morning pages, I'm defeating the purpose of them altogether. 
I go to Amazon and I buy myself a journal. I get a different one every single time I order one. They don't look the same. I feel like you can kind of have fun with that and just have something that feels like your season of life at that time. And I usually go for the perfect bound ones, not spiral bound or anything else, because I like to be able to label the spines. So I have a label maker. And when I'm done filling one of these journals, It'll say the period of time because I date and time every time I do the uh, morning pages practice. The dates and the times are at the top. I will put the label on the side when that journal is filled saying what period of time I wrote those morning pages. This sounds like this journal is now going to be filled with the most insightful and profound and amazing work. It is not. I'm literally just labeling them, labeling them and picking pretty journals just for the sake of having something nice to look at in the morning and to feel like I'm kind of documenting my thought process. When I actually sit down to write, the goal is to get all of the yuck out of my mindset and onto paper. Because by taking it out of my mind and putting it in the real world and doing something with it, I'm left to do my better work with my mindset and my brain after that. So with that being the case, When I sit down to write, I'm talking about some crazy stuff, y'all. Like from the start, it's usually to do with how much sleep I got. I will look at like my my watch and my sleep app and I'll be like, oh, my heart rate didn't drop low enough. Or I, I woke up in the middle of the night so I didn't get seven and a half straight hours like I shoot for. I'll write about a silly little tiff that me and my husband had and the grudge I'm holding about it and that I need to let go of. I'll talk about how Lucy woke me up in the middle of the night or I'll be raving about the fact that she slept through the night and didn't wake me up. I'll write about something that I'm worrying about in my business. I will do anything to take what's on my mind in that moment, good or bad, and write it down. Here is the key, and I want you to hear me on this. I don't think about what I'm going to write. I write what I'm thinking. I don't think about what I'm writing I write what I'm thinking. It sounds really simple and uneventful, and you are correct. It is pretty simple and uneventful in and of itself. But when you're doing something like this so small and so consistently, and even something this slightly annoying, you're ultimately breaking way for a much more productive and exciting mental development throughout the rest of the day. And the goal is for us to reach our goals, right? And to strive for our passions and to make time for ourselves and do things that excite us. And in order to do that, we have to get all of the other crap that's holding us back out of the way. If you never find a way to compartmentalize it, it never has a place to go. So what is the purpose of this? In no way, shape, or form should morning pages be your best work. It's making way for your best work. It clears the way. I've seen a lot of comments and questions come in about struggling on what to write. You don't decide what to write. You don't strategize on what to write. You don't think of prompts that are to come. You don't try to figure out what tomorrow's page entry is going to be. You just write whatever's on your mind. You have to trust in that process becoming a habit so that you can open doors for what you have the ability to do with your creative capacity. It could happen the same day. You could have that breakthrough because you spent the time on morning pages and you were able to do something that very day. Or more than likely, it's going to develop as a muscle over time because you're training your mind to say, this is what we do with the negativity. This is what we do with the spontaneous thoughts that don't actually mean anything. And then we have all of this space to do our better work. You just have to start learning what it means to address your feelings and your thoughts for what they are. They just are. Your feelings and your thoughts, they exist. But if you never actually deal with them, they don't know where to go. They don't decide how high level you execute on your aspirations in life. You just need to compartmentalize them so that you can separate it from your creative work. Or if they are helpful to your creative work, you can at least identify the difference. 
Now, I just don't think that there's going to be anybody better in the world to explain this to you than Julia Cameron herself. So first and foremost, I highly recommend that if you take your creative mindset and your creativity seriously, then please pick up a copy of The Artist's Way. Not only does she talk about morning pages and what it's supposed to be like and how you can work through that, but the other things that you can do to recover as a creative. I love that she talks about that because the word creative is so, it could just mean anything. And there's so much pressure in it. And we actually really have to work toward improving that creative sense that we have. Anyway, back to Julia, definitely get her book. But she also explains this so well on a page of her website about morning pages. I want to play a little bit of that video for you here so you can hear it for yourself right now. I'd like to explain the two basic tools of the artist's way. The first tool is a tool called morning pages. And as it suggests, they're done in the morning in their pages. They are three pages of longhand morning writing done when you're thinking about anything at all, like I forgot to buy kitty litter, I didn't call my sister back, I need to wash the curtains, it's time to change the bed. They seem to have nothing to do with creativity, but what they do is clear your mind. It's as though you have taken a little uh, dust buster and you go poking it into all the corners of your consciousness and you come up with what you put on the page. So morning pages are a clearing exercise and they are an exercise that makes you have much more consciousness as you pass through your day. I don't know about you, but hearing her sweet voice explain that it's okay for me to be whiny and petty and grumpy makes me feel a lot better about doing this practice every day. And you think about the fact that you're also just allowing yourself to be whiny and petty and grumpy instead of pushing it down. I'm going to be grumpy, but I'm going to be grumpy right here on these pages so that grumpy time gets the attention that it deserves. And then I'm moving on. Tony Robbins talks about something very similar when he talks about living in a beautiful state. It sounds so good, right? Like, who doesn't want to live in a beautiful state? I'm game. I totally want to be. But we can't always be in a beautiful state. It's not realistic. We are human. We have feelings and things happen. And the suffering state comes up. And sometimes we suffer because we're grumpy or sometimes we suffer because we're tired or petty or whining. And Tony talks about the fact that he will give that space 90 seconds to happen. Okay, I'm in a suffering state, really feeling like it's got to happen. So I'm going to give it 90 seconds. I agree that I will give this state 90 seconds. And then I'm going to move on and get back to my beautiful state. And that's how he deals with that. When you're doing morning pages, you're giving yourself way more than 90 seconds. When I first started doing them, it took me at least 30 minutes to fill three pages because I was still trying to figure out my flow with my thoughts and allowing them to come through the pen onto paper. So you're giving yourself that time. You're giving that negativity that time. And it sounds like something you shouldn't be doing, but you need to. Because there is negative doesn't mean you should push it down. It means you should address it, let it be what it is, and then decide that you can move away from it. I sit down with my morning pages so that I can address what is already on my mind, no matter what it is. I It could be excitement for something. It could be negativity for something. It could be depression. It could be anxiety. It could be a lot of things. I am giving it space. I am giving it time because I got something else on my to-do list today and I really want to give my all to that. That's what I feel Morning Pages does for you. If you think about getting more productive, you also have to think about the things that hold you back from being productive and how you're going to effectively handle them. All right, so now that we've broken that down, I would really like to dig into some of the biggest questions that I got from you about this, specifically from 
Instagram when it comes to struggling with morning pages and feel like you're doing them right. This entire episode was actually inspired by Sonia D on Instagram. She sent me a message and she just said, hey, I'm just really curious about whether or not this is supposed to be a diary entry or a visualization for future projects. Just if you could give me some direction, that'd be great. And I started realizing from that note, like, wow, they sound so pretty, right? Like morning pages sound so fun and lovely and amazing. And someday my grandkids are going to read them and they're going to know so much about me and and it's going to be great. No, that's not what's happening here. And I don't even know that it's a diary either. I think, um, and also diary is used in so many different ways in different countries. So when we talk about a diary in the States, you're basically sort of logging, you're, you're documenting, right? You're documenting what has happened in your life and how you feel about it. Um, a journal could also be defined similarly. In morning pages, there's no agenda. But let's break this down um, based on your individual questions. The first thing I think that popped up a lot is just actually doing the writing and being motivated. You always need a little bit of motivation to develop a habit. And this is something that is going to take time to develop because you have to feel the... um, what, what do we want to call it? We want to feel the positive effects of this, right? In order to feel like it's worth it. But it's a chicken and egg situation. If you aren't sitting down to actually do the writing, maybe you're thinking a little bit too hard about what you're going to write. And if you're not motivated, maybe you're not seeing what you could be doing with your creative state. What do you want to be? Do you want to be a writer? Do you want to be a creator? Do you want to be a YouTuber? Do you want to be a podcaster? Do you want to be a blogger? Do you want to uh, do anything? If you want to create in any way, maybe you're even doing something with your hands like um, clay creation or you make wreaths that I hang on my door or you uh, work in the garden and you want to be able to look at things in a more beautiful way, but there's so much stuff on your mind that's keeping you from getting there. Whatever you want to achieve needs to start to show you the way of how you're going to be motivated to do a practice like this that let's just say it's not that fun. It's not that great. And you are fully having to address what's on your mind and you're making it real by putting it on paper. To do that process, to keep up with that process, you do need to have a potential end goal here. And that is the whole thing. We're not just doing morning pages so that uh, maybe we can feel a little bit better. We are doing morning pages so that we can clear the way for something else. What is the thing you're clearing the way for? I think that is where you're going to find the root of that motivation. Another big question that popped up was, i um, struggling with uh, how to get it done first. And that is really major. You know, if you want to be as productive as possible throughout the day, you need to get the crap out of the way as early as possible. And that's where I feel the opportunity is with morning pages. In theory, could you say, okay, I'm doing this now, but it's I'm I'm 4 hours into my day. I've already done a little bit of scrolling on Instagram. I've done a little uh, some chores around the house. I had to go to work. I'm on my lunch break. Whatever the case is, could you still do it? Yes, of course. Absolutely you could. It's a clearing exercise. It could happen at any time. But if you are hoping to be able to spend a good portion of your day in a more creative and positive mindset, then the goal would be to knock this out as early as possible. So there needs to be a connection in your morning routine that allows you to do your have tos before your want tos, get this done so that all the things that follow it have the space to be what they could be. So doing this first, I mean, it's not the first thing I do in the morning. I allow myself to just figure out how to be human first. I get my water. I get my coffee going. I let the dog out. I make sure that I've taken care of a couple of responsibilities and things that are going to help me do my pages better and in a more focused way because I don't want them to take all day. I really don't. I want to get it done. I'm not looking forward to morning pages because I want to sit there and write prolifically. I want to sit there and get it out of my head. I'm try- it needs to be allocated someplace else. So I, I really think it's um, making it first because you care about clearing that space as early as possible. A lot of questions came in about what do I write? I feel like I have nothing to say. I'm trying to be too perfect at it. Can you give me some prompts? What's the first sentence going to be? I get it. 
But here's the thing. I don't know what's in your mind. You may sit down with your journal. I just want you to visualize with me right now. You roll out of bed, you grab your coffee, you've put some eye drops in, you feel like you can operate. You sit down at a table. You open up the journal you bought specifically for morning pages. You pick up your pen and you write the date and you write the time. That's what I do anyway. That's my that's my only prompt of this whole thing. And the first sentence says, I feel so anxious right now. Anybody who identifies with anxiety could probably write that sentence and agree with it. Because if you can't figure out how to give words to your anxiety, you can at least say that, right? I feel so anxious. I feel that a lot of the times when we are in this emotional state where we have so many feelings, we don't know how to deal with them or even how to talk them out. It's mostly because we're afraid to try to figure them out. You're not being tasked with trying to figure them out. You just need to allow the feelings to live outside of your mind. Allow them to have a space. Give them space. I feel anxious. I don't know why. It was for about four hours yesterday. Who knows why that was? I was debilitated. Who knows why that was? And when you still don't know what to say, and you still don't know what to say, you just write, I don't know what to say. Whatever is on your mind is what goes on paper. That's it. Just let it go. If you're sitting there and saying, I have anxiety. I don't know how I'm going to get through it. I don't know why I feel this way. I don't know why I can't be like everyone else and feel better. I don't know how to stop this. Just write those things. And then when you run out of things to say, you say, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to write. I still don't know what to write. I don't know what to write. And guess what? You fill three pages with whatever that situation is. Right now, you're feeling anxious and or you don't know what to write in your morning pages. It sounds counterproductive, right? Like if we're trying to clear space, how is it going to be helpful? Well, right now, the only thing that's really bothering you is you don't know why you're anxious and you're not 100% sure what you're supposed to be writing in your morning pages because your morning pages are supposed to be your thoughts and your thoughts are about your morning pages. And that's okay. You just got to get it out because tomorrow you may have a few more things on your mind that might fill a little bit more space. But if you really think that you can't fill three pages. And oh my goodness, so many people said this. Getting to three pages is so hard. I'm only doing one page because it's so hard. It takes too long to get to three pages. If you're going to sit here and tell me that you don't have enough thoughts floating through your head, that you cannot fill three pages, three, not 30, not 300, three pages, of a notebook. You should try meditation. (laughs) That sounds like an amazing experience for you. Let's be honest, right? It's okay that you're writing something that's not profound. It's okay that you're writing something that you're not excited about. You are taking the thing you don't want to think about and you're thinking it and you're writing it down. That's a lot, but that's what the practice is. Just face it. Think about what Julia was saying. Just face it because that is the exact thing that is keeping you from moving forward from it, not to even mention the fact that you want to sit down and you want to create something beautiful, create something you're excited about. All this stuff is in the way. So for the people who ask, can I rant? I I feel like I'm complaining too much. I need to complain less. I need to stay positive. No, you don't. No, you don't. These are your morning pages. This is not your publication that your grandchildren are going to read to be able to talk about your legacy. This is just what you're thinking right now. And we are human and we complain and we blame and we think negatively and we worry and we definitely rant because it feels good. Let it have the space. You can do all those things. You can do none of those things. It's completely up to you. Lots of people talking about how this takes too long. I get it. There are some days where I'm like, girl, I don't even, 30 minutes. Well, fortunately for me, uh, it's taking me far less than 30 minutes. At the beginning, it does take time because you're spending so much time over analyzing what you're doing that you won't do it. And you're like, God, I just don't, I don't want to sit there. I don't want to sit there for 30 
minutes. And um, guess what? If you don't have that time, if you can't, let's just say it takes 30 minutes. Let's say it, it takes you 10 minutes a page. 10 minutes a page. All that stuff. Just think about that. If you gave 30 minutes to all the crap that's on your brain right now that could potentially save you more than 12 hours of a lack of effectiveness and being too much in your head the rest of the day, would you do it? Would you pay that 30 minutes to get 12 hours back? And guess what? It's probably going to be more than 12 hours because we're awake longer than 12 hours. So all the other hours that we're awake, we get more space, more clarity, more creativity because we gave that 30 minutes away to a lesser cause. you got to balance it out. If you're thinking this is taking too long, you do not see the vision, you do not have the proper motivation, this isn't going to work for you. And that's okay. Maybe there's not something creatively exciting to you that would merit this practice to make sense. You should be spending your time on things in the morning that actually get you excited to start your day on your terms. That is why morning pages does not have to be in your morning routine. It doesn't have to be just because I do it does doesn't mean everybody has to do it. That was the whole reason I wrote Good Morning, Good Life. It is one mindfulness practice that you can do. There are many, many, many more to choose from. If you can't spend 20 to 30 minutes, it really only takes me about 15 now, 20 to 30 minutes to get the gunk off your brain so that you can move forward in a more positive and light capacity, hopefully over the long term, then this isn't going to be for you. But I see the value in that. So for those of you who are saying, um, I think faster than I write, it's cramping my hand, I'm getting bored, that's okay. That's okay. If you see the vision beyond all of this, then those things are just minor details. Let me tell you one of my biggest issues right now with morning pages. I am just now finding out how dyslexic I am. I'm pretty sure I am super dyslexic, like for real, for real. And I realize that because, uh, and I don't mean it as a joke at all. I actually think it's a full on possibility. But um, it also could be a symptom of just thinking faster than I write and wanting to get done with morning pages, wanting to get everything out of my brain faster. So I end up writing too fast. I don't finish all of my words. I don't fill in every letter to all the words. I'm literally writing in shorthand because I'm just trying to get the thought out as fast as it's happening. It's frustrating, though, because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so I feel like I'm dyslexic. I don't know. I could be completely wrong. Don't be offended if you're dyslexic. I really honestly feel like I am sometimes because I, I even type a little bit dyslexic. So it's okay. We're just say, say, hey, look, look at me. Hey, Amy, if you are dyslexic, you're dealing with it. You're finding a way to deal with it. You're addressing it. You're not ignoring it. You're not poo-pooing it. You're not belittling it. You're just looking at it and going, you know what? Hey, there it is. Dyslexia shows up in a big way when I'm doing morning pages. And I am here to observe it. I am here to say, okay, that's a that's fine. I see you. You are happening. You make me a little anxious. You make me a little upset. But this is your space for that. Let it have its space. And the last thing I want to talk about is uh, confidentiality. I think it's really interesting um, that not only is this kind of a diary, but it's like the worst diary because it's probably a lot of negative crap written in a notebook and God forbid it be about somebody close to you or um, something that's happening in your life that you don't want people to know about and you're trying to give yourself that space to be open. Uh, I have the trust of my only other human roommate to just have a safe space for my journal and have a safe space for all of my notebooks and have a safe space for me. And so I don't have somebody that is intruding on that space. 
in theory, uh, somebody breaks into my house and steals my journals, that would definitely suck. But I would be shocked if they kept reading through all of the chicken scratch and um, dyslexia. <laughs> so I'm not belittling dyslexia, by the way. I really mean it when I say I don't know that my words are, are even um, understandable by anybody else. If anybody wanted to go through that, um, you know what? There might be something in there. I would regret a little bit. But the problem I have with that hindering me from this practice and what I hope that you'll see is, again, the motivation of why I'm doing this and the tremendous amount of productivity and end results and goal reaching that is happening in my life because I'm giving my yucky thoughts a safe space. So if they were ever to not be safe, uh, I still got all this other good stuff out of it, man. I've written books because of morning pages. I have made thousands of YouTube videos because of morning pages. I have done a lot of things in my life. And I think fairly even keel. And I you know, I think about the next fight I'm going to have with somebody would be better off in chicken scratch in my morning pages than actually happening and affecting the actual relationship. I think about all those things and what it has saved me in my life. And to me, it's worth finding a little hiding space and putting a lock and key on the box of my morning pages. That's just me. I think um, if that is holding you back, then look for a way to address that so that you can feel completely open with that space. But if you need to tell the people around you that it's something that you do and you are not proud of the person that you come off as in that notebook, again, you are becoming so responsible about who you are trying to be and what the reality of that is, that if you can communicate that to someone, that's a huge win. If you can't communicate that to someone, that is not a requirement of morning pages. Just find a freaking lock box or something and throw the thing in there. That's what I would recommend. I don't have to do that. I put it in a drawer. It's always in my drawer, my drawer with my my daily stoic and my morning pages and my goals journal. Everything just sits together. It's ready for me every single morning. So I don't have to decide if I'm going to do my morning pages every morning. I do them every morning because I go downstairs. I get my lemon water after I've washed my face and I've let the dog out and I come back upstairs in my house robe and I sit in my closet where I have a desk to write. I open my drawer. I pull out my journals. It just is. I remove decision making from that so that I will move forward with my practice every day. So if I had to unlock a box in order to do it, I would do it. But just make it a process. There is no right way to do morning pages. There's definitely not a perfect way. And um, you can make this whatever it is you want it to be. I really hope this was helpful. I think there are just so many consistent questions that happen amongst people who are experimenting with this practice. Keep experimenting. It's okay. Trust me. I can't remember the last time I went back and looked at my morning pages because I had some huge epiphany. It doesn't happen very often. If I do, then I will usually remember it because I'm like, wow, something really good happened in morning pages today. Let me go write that in my bullet journal real quick so I don't forget. It's usually just a bunch of crap that needs to go away. And I put it away in my journal and I move on with my day. I would love to hear what you thought of this. Please come over on Instagram to my latest post on Details Podcast at Details Podcast on Instagram. What was your biggest breakthrough when it comes to the morning pages practice? If you've tried it before, if you've been putting it off because you didn't think it was right for you, please leave that in a comment so I can hear what you thought about all of this. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. Remember, subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love, and go after the life you want. I'll see you back here next Tuesday. Cheers.